party supplier on the 23rd of June. In an email to customers, they say anyone who purchased or tried to purchase tickets on the site between February and June of this year could potentially be affected. All notified customers have been asked to change their passwords when they next log into their accounts. That's it for now. More in an hour. News Talk Weather. Thanks to Des Kelly Interiors. Our friendly staff will help you choose the perfect carpet at the new look Des Kelly Interiors. Staying hot and sunny this evening, dry and calm overnight, lowest temperatures of 13 to 15 degrees. And now you're up to date on News Talk. Off the ball. Thanks to Screwfix.ie, championing the trade with a dedicated call centre. This, this is News Talk. You're very welcome along to Wednesday's Off the Ball. It's another busy show for you this evening. Uh, very shortly, we'll speak to Alan Milton, the GAA's Director of Communications, about the last number of days regarding St. Conlet's Park and Crow Park and Kildare. We'll also talk to James Horne about the game itself. Suddenly, the football's been lost, all this. And uh, we'll ask James, I wonder if even Mayo's game plan is disrupted by not knowing what size pitch they're playing on, all that kind of business, as we look forward to Saturday. We will have Michael Lina, Australian rugby legend, World Cup winner on the show. He'll be talking to us about his life in rugby. And about six years ago, uh, suffered a stroke, Michael Lina, and was very, very lucky to survive it all. So that story's on the way just after 8 o'clock. And the big news over in Russia is that Germany are out of the 2018 World Cup in remarkable circumstances. Kevin Gilban was at the game. He will join us on the football show. And there's plenty more besides. 53106 is the text number. We are at Off The Ball on Twitter. You're very welcome to get in touch. Dave McIntyre is here in the studio. Hello, Dave. Been a dramatic day. It sure has. So <laughs> a lot I'm, has happened in I the know, last 12 hours. Yeah, I know you're speaking to... We'll go, on, we'll go on to GA in just a second, but I think we should just briefly, briefly uh, remark upon the fact that the world champions are out. And yeah. in somewhat farcical circumstances towards the end with... Manuel Neuer going up the pitch ahead of two or three other German outfield players. He said to them, you stay back, I can do better than you outfield. And uh, gave away a ridiculous kind of goal you wouldn't see in the Phoenix Park and all that. But uh, extraordinary stuff, kind of a shocked group of faces on the, um, on the German side. Yogi Love really f- struggling to compute what was going on. Well, yeah, I don't think they should be shocked because they just didn't perform to the level that suggests they should get out oh, of the group. Still, I'd say, utterly shocking to their system that they're out of the World Cup. Based on reputations. Based on reputation. Well, they would have long. they would have woken up this morning assuming that when dusk fell tonight they'd be in the last sixteen. Well, this hear, would never have entered their heads that they would this would befall them. When you hear Matt Hummels after the game, he was speaking to ZDF and he says that they haven't performed since the autumn of twenty seventeen. And you know he kind of knew yeah. that coming into this World Cup they're slightly undercooked. Yeah. Well, we'll talk to Kevin Ban on the uh, football show, but we should turn to the news really, which has captivated a lot of people over the last number of days. And the end result ultimately is one that Kildare will be very happy with. Uh, the Mayo Kildare Round Three qualifier goes ahead, 7 p.m. St Conlet's Park in Newbridge. We have the GAA's Director of Communications, Alan Milton, on the line. Evening, Alan. Good evening, gents. Thanks very much for joining us. Appreciate your time. Uh, just a, a quick point on the ticket information for people. Are they on general sale? How many are we talking? I think about 1,500 per uh, fan base. Uh, I don't believe they'll be on general sale, but you're right, about 1,500 will be made available to each county committee and it'll be up to them to do what they want. I'd imagine they'll go to the club network, but I can't say that categorically. Okay. So the decision was made this morning, presumably, or late last night. Who made the decision exactly? And you might give us, uh, as specifically as you can, the rationale. Well, CCC uh, convened this morning to review the situation in light of developments last night where a meeting took place in Kildare where a whole new set of circumstances around uh, match management were put on the table in conjunction with Angarda Shea Connor and such were the safeguards that were provided over the course of that conversation that the goalposts moved considerably, moved positively in the direction of Newbridge being able to facilitate the, the fixture. So those, that information or, or that match setup was not in evidence or with no reason to think that there was any difference to how Newbridge would have organised the game on Monday when the CCC met. And as you're probably aware, the CCC meet regularly on a Monday. And there can be a degree of haste in getting the fixtures together for a variety of reasons, not least because the media are looking for them, because we've broadcast uh, facilities to put in place, because we need to get ticket logistics in order, and we need to inform the counties about hotel accommodation and travel, etc., etc. So uh, over the course of three hours on Monday... <clears throat> Uh, the decision was taken to play a double header in Coke Park, as you're all aware at this stage, um, and that moved on this morning to a, a very different juncture. Yeah. So specifically on the health and safety grounds, that was less to do with 
St. Conlon's Park, which had been given the OK in accordance with the Slattery report for a certain number in terms of attendance. It was yeah, more to do... Yeah, 200 is the yeah, So it was more to do... You had concerns with traffic management outside the ground. That was the big health and safety concern, was it? Yeah, well, one of the concerns, Joe, would have been families, young families possibly as well, turning up to the ground with no tickets, thinking that they might get tickets. Because it doesn't matter how often we preach that don't come to the ground if you don't have a ticket. Human nature being what it is, people will try and they'll come along. And you've got to remember, some of the people in the CCC are highly experienced, including Michael Reynolds, um, who, as his position in a long-serving Leinster official, is often the event and will be the match coordinator or the event manager on Saturday in St. Conlet's Park. So nobody or very few people would know the venue as well as he does. So this wasn't done for any other reason other than health and safety. And I know there's lots of theories around, and I heard some of them thrown around, which were which are hard to comprehend. It was done for no other reason other than health and safety is not just about what happens in the ground. So, for example, if we get a really bad belt of weather in Crow Park in the winter, the guards will advise us if the roads or paths around Crow Park or the lead-up roads to the facility are, are treacherous, that you need to consider whether this match is worth proceeding with. So there's a whole set of circumstances that don't just involve inside the stadium. Um, and that pretty much led to the decision being taken that was taken. Yeah, OK. We're in the midst of a heat wave, so probably roads were okay. And on the traffic situation, it was very noticeable that uh, Keane O'Neill said to KFM that the health and safety argument made by the GA was, quote, a convenient untruth. So, in effect, in his opinion, it was a lie. Well, I'd love he to didn't, hear him he elaborate on that, Joe. What does okay. he mean by that? What does anyone mean by that? Well, he said it was a convenient untruth. He wasn't buying it. And maybe the Kildare well, statement... Why, why maybe the would, Kildare, I'm sorry for going across Yes, yeah, sorry, go on. Why would the GA not want the game to go ahead in Newbridge if there were not health and safety reasons? Because I haven't heard a rationale that stands up in any forum heretofore. OK, well, I suppose Ned Quinn made that argument on OTBAN yesterday because actually, I don't know if you heard Ned Quinn, chairman of the CCC. I did, obviously, yeah. yeah. Like, his, his big issue, it struck me listening to the full interview, was less health and safety and more to do with capacity. Just for people who didn't catch it, here's a brief glimpse of Ned's main reasoning. I thought it was very much his main reasoning and less health and safety. So, the information before our meeting yesterday was that the safety capacity for the game, this game, uh, in Newbridge would be uh, 8,000. Then when one subtracts the number of season ticket holders entitled to a ticket for the game, this figure further reduces into approximately 4,500. So we were faced then with the options of put these tickets on sale, on general sale online as we normally do, or divide them equally between the competing, the competing counties as the 4,500 tickets. And in either scenario, it was felt that it was likely just that just over 2,000 tickets would become available to Kildare supporters, as the vast, vast majority of the season ticket holders are from Mayo. I think the figure is approximately 3,500. So the meeting felt that such a situation wasn't tenable and could, if you like, potentially lead to a substantial number of people without tickets turning up uh, seeking admission to the game. So maybe that ties in in touch with... Yeah, um, well, I'd make the argument there, Joe, that because of the limited... Uh, capacity of the venue that people may be more inclined to turn up on the day and chance the ramp to, to get in. Like I grew up, Joe, going to Leinster matches in Newbridge, in Navan, in Wexford Park. But I've asked the question: When was the last time a Leinster Championship match was held in St Conlon's Park? So I don't know why people were so surprised that there were issues before we reached the conclusion we reached today. Mm. There was, and um, Ned made this point as well. I just this is a much shorter clip. On that whole theme of people turning up to the stadium, certainly uh, people w were not impressed with whatever. When Ned might have put this in a way he may re regret, but if you just have a listen here, there was he talked about maybe issues outside the ground, and we really don't have a history of that in this brilliant sport, thankfully. And I, th I don't think people appreciated that being brought up. Here's just a quick clip of Ned, and then that's the last clip of Ned. What is the actual safety risk there? Is like as I say, has there been a previous case of this where we've seen this in the GEA? Uh, where this actually becomes uh, a risk to the livelihoods of people who are attending. What, what's the specific risk we're talking about? Well, the risk would be that people will get involved with other spectators. That's the risk. As in crowd trouble? Well, I wouldn't, call it, I wouldn't describe it as crowd trouble, but there could be animosity shown to people who had tickets that they couldn't get them if they came and they were regular and would probably have been regular supporters. Of Kildare. I know where you're going with this, here, but like, as I said already, I can't understand any further to the decision was made uh, yesterday regarding this game. You can't fully stand over that point, Alan. There's no history of that in the game. That just wouldn't have happened, acrimony, people getting involved with each other, whatever that means. That, 
that, that doesn't sit well with I don't, people. I don't, I don't get the outset. It's not something that's overly prevalent in our games. It's something you rarely see, uh, to be honest about it. But I think when you put it all together, I, I, I don't know why people wouldn't have seen that there could possibly be access to St. Connors Park, as you well know, is yeah. tricky enough. It's not, it's not built on a greenfield site. It's in the middle of a provincial town. It will get clogged up. But we're happy that some of the safeguards that have been put in place now will go some way to alleviating that. And, and we're happy because we wouldn't be going ahead with the fixture otherwise that it can be run in a smooth and competent manner. Here's where I get slightly confused, and it's it's with the Kildare statement, and we'll have to dis- we'll have to agree to disagree slightly on on how people may have reacted upon turning up to the ground because I think they would have gone maybe to other games in the expectation of kids being allowed in, but this would have been fairly well flagged, and I know you're saying you flag stuff in the past it doesn't always work, but this would have been fairly well flagged that this game was sold out, ticket only. I don't think anyone realistically would have turned up with their kid expecting to waltz in with one ticket and the kid just with them. So I think we'll park that for a second. But tied in with that is the Kildare statement. And they say their, their timeline of events is as soon as the draw was made, we were in contact with Newbridge, Garda Siakana immediately. And they were happy with the fixture going ahead. Their only request being that a throw in at 7 o'clock given the influx of people in the area due to the Irish Derby taking place at the Curra at 5.15. Having received the backing of the Gardaí, we sent an email to the CCCC advising them that we would have no difficulty in hosting the fixture as an all-ticket affair and we were already putting play- pa- plans in place to do so. We informed the CCC of the advice surrounding the 7pm throw-in and advised that the Management Committee of Kildare GA had no issue with adhering to the criteria for St Conlon's Park as previously agreed with the National Facilities Health and Safety Committee. That reads to me like they took things very seriously, they check, checked things thoroughly uh, with the Gardaí. The Gardaí took the situation very seriously because the Gardaí came back and said, don't go 5 o'clock throw-in, go 7 o'clock throw-in. So that reads to me like Kildare and the Gardaí sat down, looked at the logistics and signed off on them and were happy with them. So then I don't know how we're at a situation where by Monday lunchtime this thing has turned around to Crow Park. That's, that doesn't make sense to me. Well, for, I'll make a couple of points on that, Joe. Yeah. First and foremost, I don't sit on decision-making body, so I'm not privy to the email you reference. But I am presuming... No, that's that's that it. Oh, sorry, the, the email sent back there. From sorry. Kildare and yeah, the fair enough. Yeah was not half as thorough or as elaborated upon as, as the communications last night. I.e., it's quite possible that the plan that's normally in place for Newbridge was, was sent in and it was considered, and in, in this particular instance was considered not to be adequate. What transpired last night was a different type of a match plan with different arrangements. So I think there's a gap between what happened uh, up to noon on Tuesday and what happened last night in Kildare at the meeting. Mm. I, think how, I think that's how... Uh, the decision can be bridged because there's more information and there was better planning. There's going to be more guards, more stewards and better Fair resources enough. thrown at the fixture. But can, but can, I, can I, and I, I appreciate, look, this is, a, this is a very good conversation and it's, it's great that you're on to clarify things. I'm just going to jump in there just to, to clarify one more thing. When I say I don't really understand how we got to the point where we got to on Monday, so it seems that the protocol here is you go back to Kildare and say, well, look, we're, we're not so hot in St. Conlon's Park. Can you nominate another venue? Exactly, yeah. Yeah, and Kildare declined to do so, and then we're suddenly into Crow Park territory. Um, like, surely that was the point when Kildare declined to nominate another venue, that you say, okay, let's have a chat here, because it's your yeah, prerogative. Yeah, but how far do you go no, with that, Joe? I've no, uh, already outlined but, the but not, not, the not, 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 not very... finalised on a Monday as early yeah. as we possibly can. No, how, look, how long do you let it drag on for? A few, uh, look, a couple, a, a I couple... I also make uh, no, one point as well. If you might remember the last time Johnny got... I'll just answer that question, Alan, Alan, Alan. They brought 20,000 people to Don Condra that day with no tickets. No, I know. I'll just answer the question, though. ...and the huge numbers they bring everywhere they go. So, you know, I think it's wrong to ride roughshod over those concerns because I think they're genuine and I think they're well-constructed. So do I. But I'll just answer the question when you say, how long do you mm. wait? I mean, long enough to have a quick chat with the Gardaí. Like, long enough to say, well, you haven't sent us enough detail on that plan of yours. So, actually, would you send us more detail and do it very quickly, please? And let's talk with the Gardaí. Long enough to say, let's not have... Well, it's my let's not agree in Crow Park. And, I, and here's, here's there, the other... No, I just want to finish that, that point. Level of detail. I, I just, didn't I, revert to, to, uh, to furnish the CCC with the information that eventually made it possible to have it. Now, we can go around in circles about this all night. There's going to the minute of it, but 
it's not going to change what happened on Monday. No, I know. I'm thankful that what happened last night has left us in a different space. I think we all are. But look, the, I think the GA should be applauded for making the right decision here. But ultimately, I th- you know, we got to a point where by five, six o'clock on Monday evening, like on Monday evening, where Fergal McGill, the GA's director of games, is telling the Irish Times there's no room for n- manoeuvre. If Kildare don't show up in Crow Park at Saturday, the game will be awarded to Mayo. And, you know, that, that, things got militant very, very quickly. And there well, was a perceived... Both sides, you'd have to say, Joe. They sure did. But I would yeah, say, yeah. from a Kildare point of view, they would have said, we've gone to the Gardaí. We've, moved, we've, give, we've, told, we've got the clearance from them. The Guardi have taken the concern seriously. We've moved throw in. Like, this is our suggestion. We're, no, just let me finish. Now, just hang on. I'm not here no. to bash Kildare, by the way, uh, as you probably know. Yeah. Um, we're all part of the same GA family, but you still haven't given me a rationale as to why, why St. Connors Park doesn't host Leinster Championship games. So there's obviously a challenge with the facility, and that bore out on Monday during yes, those discussions. But the Slattery report has said it's okay to uh, hold this number of people. It's mm. very clear on that point. Kildare consulted with the Gardaí, very clear on that point. It was their prerogative. I think the problem, the reason this thing blew up, you know, New Bridge or nowhere, the reason this whole thing uh, caught the imagination of people is there was a perceived arrogance on the GAA's part. There was a sense of, you'll do what you're told. Of, you know, like, the, like the, rule bo- the rule book says, really, the rule book says the you have home venue, but you're doing what you're the told, even, what the, even right despite what our own rule book says. In a, in a ground when they hadn't got a match planned that they think was capable of hosting the large influx of people into Newbridge. But the Gardaí said they could handle it that morning. But we'd no evidence of that. Any, any difference in this approach than they would get to hold a normal but, but fixture at St. Connor. So this is not a normal fixture. Yeah, but would the onus not be on you to have a quick chat with the Gardaí when they've given uh, Kildare the thumbs up that morning? Well, I think Kildare, as, as the host county, should have facilitated facilitate that conversation and sure. it didn't happen for whatever reason. But, uh, I, I mean, think, Joe, to be perfectly fair... I no, 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 I, 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 don't, I don't think that's, it, I don't think that's right. Of, I, as you see it, as the nub of the matter. Yeah, well, I just... I, I, I think it is the nub of the matter in a way, though, yeah. because it's how you conduct business, that, yeah. really. So, I mean... But we've, we've, we've dwelled on it and we've over the back and we're obviously not going to agree on it, so... But ju- just... I ex- suggest we might move on to another aspect. Okay, okay, I do. Let's ju- just explain it to me. Because I'm, I'm still not fully understanding it. Well, I've explained it to you. Also. I'm not going to repeat myself. So. Right. Well, I'll, re- I'll rephrase it, and you let, can. Let's, let's I'll rephrase it, and you can make a final comment. Kildare go to the G to the on Gardi Shikana. On Gardi say that is fine with us. You you say we're not happy with that. Nominate another venue. They say no. By lunchtime, it's on in Crow Park. You haven't even talked to the Gardi. You haven't elaborated on the plan. It's been straight for. If you don't fulfil this pi- fixture, you're kicked out of the competition and everybody Kildare not you know Kildare included everybody said well hang on that's not really fair the rule book says they have the right to choose their home venue like so people said well what's the rule book there for surely you can understand well, that's that a concern well that's the bone of contention by the way Joe that the CCC are the ultimate arbiter and where games are played and when they're played I think that's accepted and it's mentioned after every draw an RTE on a Monday morning all of these fixtures are subject to clarification and confirmation by the CCC so I don't know how far you would have went over and back uh, uh, but the fixtures have to be made on a Monday at the earliest opportunity. They were made. Um, more information was put in front of us last night that allowed a different verdict to be reached, mm. and that's why the game is going ahead in Newbridge on Saturday evening. It's, just, it's as simple as that. But the, the feeling, and certainly the, the narrative coming from the GA on Monday evening, Alan, was that there was no room for manoeuvre. Clearly that we're in the position we're in tonight, there absolutely was room for manoeuvre. Yeah, well, I think that's because other persons got, got involved, Dave, um, and... I think when you bring fresh voices to the conversation, it brings a different dynamic to things. And I would see that as being a positive as opposed to a negative. But is there any regrets on the GA's part at all that, that the, the talk became so militant so quickly and that essentially, while Kildare obviously did, the GA had also backed themselves into a very entrenched corner come Monday evening? Well, I think there's a regret, Dave, that we weren't talking more about Gaelic football from Monday onwards and about how the teams were going to set up and who was going to be playing in what position, etc., etc. Um You've got to remember the CCC, it's not, it's not just going around beating a big stick on tables, telling people you're going to play your game here and you're going to, and you're going to answer back. It's that every, every county in Ireland has a CCC, so they either have a degree of authority that isn't undermined at every turn, or it's not. They're an independent body, vastly experienced. It's one of the most experienced committees, four provincial secretaries serving on it. They don't reach decisions willy-nilly. Uh, they organise hundreds of fixtures a year, and I don't know when is the last time we had a Ferrari around the fixture that they, they organised like we've had around this one. Are there lessons to be learned? 
I'm sure that, that that'll be scrutinised in the coming days when we get the fixture out of the way. And if, if it's found that there are lessons to be learned, it'll be applied to the process to enhance it going forward. Well, I guess there's a very good chance, Alan, isn't it, that if lessons have been learned, that will have to be displayed quite soon, potentially, if a Clare or a Roscommon or indeed a Kildare make it to the Super 8s. Is there a chance the CCCC will find themselves in this exact position in about three weeks' time? Well, look, I can't preempt what's going to happen. I'm not going to try and guess some of the results. But I do know, for example, Clare, and correct me if I'm wrong here, would have hosted a, a Mayo qualifier in Ennis. If it wasn't last year, it was the year before. Um, Roscommon, um, personally speaking, I'm not speaking on behalf of GA here, I think there's a threshold of 15,000 out there that is a game changer. We're at 8-2 with Newbridge, so it's a different type of a facility. Is that 15,000 actually within the statute books, or if you like, the rule no, books? No, but, but Leinster have operated on the basis this year, if I'm not mistaken, again, that if there's a, a game to be hosted, a large championship game to be hosted, that it, there's an expectation now that 15,000 is an accepted threshold amount amongst the counties of Leinster. I think it's worth looking at. So Michael Dare lose their home game if they make it to the last eight? Well, I can't answer that because it's not in the last eight, Dave. But, but I'll have that conversation with you if they make it. Okay. Mm. <laughs> we, we have a round. We have a round or two to go. Yes. Yeah, but we, I guess we need to plan, don't we? Has, we will, has that been discussed plan, this Joe. week? We will plan, yeah. but not on national airwaves. Yeah. So, sorry. We will plan, but not on the national airwaves. Okay. Yeah. Um, and is the net result probably out of all this that there'll have to be some kind of rule change going ahead next season whereby the CCCC can overrule when it comes to rounds one, two and three and the qualifiers if they're unhappy with the grounds? Yeah, I'm not sure if overrule is the right term, but I definitely think it will facilitate a conversation in the close season whereby another audit or a revisit of the audit that was previously conducted on our stadia is conducted to see if, to ensure that we don't have a rerun of what we've had for the last week. I don't think anybody in the GA, as I've already said, would, would want a repeat of it. You'd rather be speaking about football and our hurling, um, and that's what we're primarily here to do. Mm. I'm glad to say this is not a common occurrence and I don't remember the last time I know Kildare lost the fixture in 2012 and they had to travel to Port Leash to host Limerick uh, and I know Loud have lost the fixture to go to yeah. Navin and so it happens from time to time but I can tell you despite some of the theorists and the theories out there finance is not a driver the driver in this instance as it always is is health and safety mm. I think Kildare were happy to go in, in 2012 might be the slight difference and look the, you know I think Dave is of this opinion, I don't want to speak for him, but certainly there is an argument that it, the game might, Kildare might have been better off putting this thing on in Port Leash, given the demand, and get as many fans in there. So yeah, the look, capacity we'll argument one story to the was a legitimate one. It's going to be, just the long and the short of it, I, I have a media centre today with 13 seats in it, Joe. Now, it's not the primary reason why we hold games, but yeah. I had 40 applicants for media seats before we left Crow Park this evening. So there, there are other practical considerations around the facilities needed to host the game. Um, and we have to be cognizant of them but the real challenge now for people is going to be get their hands on tickets and I just hope the place is wedged in a positive way and we have a fantastic atmosphere for what should be a fantastic game of football on Saturday night and that yeah. a line is drawn under it and as I've already said lessons learned in all quarters Yeah and um, just one last point on say next year going forward would, would that kind of a rule change have to go before Congress is that how all that would work? No, in my understanding is that the, the, the match day protocols that are issued to every county um, and have been sanctioned at Central Council inform all the counties of the authority of the CCCC. So okay. I think if it had gone the distance, and I can't say this hand on heart, but I think it would have had a very, very strong case for the decision to have been left as it was. Okay. Thankfully, we didn't have to go there. Okay. Um, one last quick area to touch on, which you briefly to get a comment on you from uh, regards if, uh, comments made by a few different people. Uh, Jim McGuinness, for instance, was talking about the fact Dublin will have two games at Crow Park in the Super Eights. Hasn't been fixed yet, Joe. Um, but leaves us with a big conundrum that their home stadium is probably not fit for purpose when it comes to attendance figures. So yeah, uh, there's no definitive decision because we don't have a final lineup on things. Okay. It, Best assured, it will be a topic of conversation in the coming days. Of yeah, no, I, sus I, I suspect it's going to blow up. So, look, the, the short argument oh. for people listening in, because they may not be familiar with it, in short, Dublin, Donegal, and then it'll be Cork or, or someone else, Roscommon or someone else in the um, Super 8s or in, in that correct. particular group. And the plan is you get one game at home, which in Dublin's case is going to be Crow Park, realistically. You get one game in Crow Park and you get one game away. So Jim McGuinness today making the point, well, Donegal for the Crow Park game will have to play Dublin and that's an unfair advantage to uh, Dublin. So there, there is a sense maybe that the integrity of the competition is affected. Is, is it possible uh, to address that for this season's competition? For instance, a quick thought I had was 
for the Crow Park game, it's the prerogative of Dublin's opposition. They are, if they want to play at Crow Park, because it's a season highlight mm. for them against the Dubs, they can choose Crow Park, absolutely, or they get the choice of a neutral venue which is chosen by the GAA. So, for instance, in practice, you might go to Donegal. For the Crow Park game, you can take on the Dubs in Crow Park and get your day out in Crow Park, or your, the other option on the table provide, the GAA is choosing is Clonus, and the opposition against Dublin at uh, choose. Is some kind of clause like that possible? Well, I, don't I don't think the Dubs have any possible. I don't think the Dubs have mind. Uh, and rule. First point I'd make on it, Joe, is yeah. this all went before Congress where every county has representation, and it was common knowledge from the get-go when when the new quarter-final formats were discussed and laid out, that this anomaly existed. It existed then, it exists now. The fact of the matter is, all the games taking place in Crow Park in the first round, it's not Dublin's fault. They're taking place in Crow Park. It just so happens that Dublin is in the capital. Uh, the Dublin GAA team is based here, and there's nothing that can be done about that. The third round game is, is the one, obviously, that Parnell Park will not facilitate... It probably wouldn't facilitate all the season ticket holders for Dublin and whoever they're going to be playing against. Yeah, so that's going to be Croker, so that's, realistically. That's the, that's the conundrum. Yeah, but, but th- that's, um, going to be, that's going to be Croker. I, I we can operate room in, in rule as it exists, so okay. it probably, to answer your question, a matter for Congress next February. Okay, if, so that, if counties feel sufficiently strongly that they want to revisit it. Right, okay, well that was, that was basically the answer yeah. I was looking for. So it, w- it certainly wouldn't be changed in time for 2018 and it would probably be a Congress issue if that's going to be looked at next year. That would be my understanding. Okay. Alan, one final question before we let you go, and you've yep. been brilliant with your time. Really appreciate it because I, I'd say your phone has been ringing pretty often <laughs> no, over the course of the day. It didn't take long, really, by Monday evening, and it seemed there was just a groundswell, a unified groundswell that was rowing in behind Kildare, and this could be for any number of reasons, but there just seemed that this was more a bit of a lightning rod for the disillusionment among a lot of people in the GAA. Um, and their dissatisfaction amongst a lot of members with Croke Park and maybe the way some of the avenues Croke Park have gone down in recent years. Is there an underestimation of the dissatisfaction amongst GA members from those who run the organisation within Croke Park? Do you think we, were the GA surprised by the level of, I don't know if vitriol is too strong a word, but certainly the huge opposition that was sent the GA's direction over the last 48 hours and everybody, almost to a man, woman and child, rowing in behind the stance that Kildare had taken. Uh, make a couple of observations there, Dave. When I hang up this phone here now, I'm going up to watch Finn Gallions and around Towers in the Vision 2 game and most of my co-workers in, in Crow Park are the same. We're all involved in clubs. We don't live in some ivory tower or some bubble out in the Azores where we're not connected with the real people. We are the real people. I've come from under nine camogie session tonight. Like it, There's a fallacy out there and a narrative that I find hard to understand and, I, and I, it needs to be challenged. There's no, you could not run an organisation on some of the tripe that appears on social media today. Some of it is well constructed and some of it's genuine and heartfelt. Some of it is constructed on a house of cards. It's not built on fact, it's not informed, and you couldn't possibly run an organisation by that. I think what was a game changer was, and I said it earlier on to Marty Morrissey, that obviously Keane O'Neill felt sufficiently strong about it to go on national t- television. That's not a common occurrence. And it probably mobilised people and rallied people and, and, and lifted things up an octave or two. But our dealings were with, with the volunteer uh, members of the Kildare County Committee over the last few days, and we worked with them to bring a resolution to this fact. But my parting shot to you would be, if the GA is so transfixed with finance, why do we organise 65% of our games are loss-making? Why don't we take revenue from bookmakers? Why don't we have gambling, uh, gambling and alcohol sponsorship? Like, I think some of the narrative is just out of control. Uh, the GA is not run by a bunch of mavericks. Most of them are elected to run it. They're accountable and answerable to every county board who are in turn answerable to the clubs. So if there's an issue there, and there very obviously was in this instance, and there seems to be lots of other issues, I think with 750,000 members, I think on occasion when something goes out there, you can have thousands of different opinions on things, and that's the way it should be. It keeps people in Crow Park real, and it keeps, it keeps us grounded, and that's, we're here to serve the membership, and that's the way it should be. Alan, we've kept you long enough. Thanks for coming on and giving the GA side of things. It's much appreciated, and we'll talk again at some stage. Thanks very much. You're very welcome, Joe. See you there. Okay. Alan Nelson on. there. Uh, Director of GA Communications. We'll take a short break, big reaction to that. And um, we had planned to talk to James Horne and Brendan O'Brien from the Irish Examiner anyway about this whole situation before Alan uh, was made available to us this evening. So uh, the, the lads were listening in, I know, to that. So we'll chat to them as well. Off the ball on News Talk. Thanks to Screwfix.ie. Championing the trade with a choice of over 20,000 quality trade products. Hi, I'm Brendan Kavanagh, CEO of GDPRCourse.com. 
GDPR became law on Friday, May 25th. Are you worried that your business, volunteer organization or club is at risk of being fined? We now run daily accredited GDPR practical implementation courses at our nationwide training facilities. This course gives members of your organization tasked with GDPR the practical tools to implement and maintain GDPR compliance. Don't get ripped off by expensive consultants. Go to GDPRcourse.com. When was the last time you switched your home insurance? Visit chill.ie to search leading insurers and save. Chill Insurance Limited trading as Chill Insurance is regulated by the Central Bank of Ireland. It's the challenge of a lifetime. How to make business meetings more interesting. Guess what? 